In this video, we will be installing VMware's vSphere Replication 8.7. A point to note here is that I've already installed vSphere Replication in my primary site, which I'm calling Site A, or with VCSA01. I'm now going to proceed with installing it on my Site B, connected to VCSA02. And the reason for this is just to speed up the video, there's no point of showing you how to install a basic OVA twice. So on both sites, we need to complete the following procedure, which is deploying the vSphere application OVA. So here, here I am on my second site. I've mounted the installation media to my Windows file system, uh, Windows operating system. I navigate to the bin directory, and you can see here, these are the files uh, that we need to select when deploying the OVF. So we go to create a new OVF, on our Site2 vCenter. We select those files. Go next. Give the virtual machine a name, so I'm just going to call it simply VR02 since I'm on Site2. And select a compute resource, this might be a cluster or an individual host. O2 here is um, my like DR site if you like, whereas O1 is my primary. Just review the details, make sure you're happy. Accept the license agreement. And here I'm just going to do a, a straightforward installation. So two CPUs is fine for me. I'm just going to choose some storage location. So I'm going to deploy it here onto one of my local data stores and make it thin just for the lab due to uh, lack of space. Yep, straightforward networking configuration. And here we need to basically customize the template. So we're going to specify uh, all the installation uh, requirements. So this is things like the root password, uh, the admin password, which we'll just confirm. Uh, yep, your NTP server. Or if you have more than one, then use a separated uh, uh, use a common separated value uh, list. Give it a host name. Specify your networking requirements. So IPv4 or six, static or DHCP, and all the basic uh, networking details. Obviously, make sure that you have the correct DNS records in your DNS uh, system before proceeding. You want to make sure you've got both an A and a pointer record as well. A networking one IP address. I'm just going to use uh, the same IP for uh, management and, and storage here. We'll see a bit more about that later. So just going to hit the deploy button. That's going to go off there and um, inst install that package into our site B. Okay, once that's done, let's power it up. And once it's online, navigate to the uh, IP address or the host name with port 5480 that we specified at installation time. And we're gonna log in with the admin credentials that we created before as well. And you can see here all the, all the configuration options on the left-hand side, which you'll wanna go through eventually. Uh, but there is a handy wizard here that we'll, we'll just use for the purposes of uh, initially setting up the appliance. So we're gonna bind this appliance to uh, our vCenter that it's for. So this is our my O2 site, so VCSA02. I'm gonna specify um, Username, username and password for the vCenter so that the uh, application appliance can connect to it. We're going to give our site a name, so site B in my example, an email address. 
and then the you know how we want to refer to this appliance. So I'm just going to use IP addresses here just for simplicity of my lab, but you would use your DNS address typically here. And there's the option for storage traffic IP if you want to separate your storage from your management of the appliance. So if you log into, for example, our site A, vCenter, we'll see the new option on the left-hand side under the menu. And we can, connect, we can connect to the site recovery portal. And once the replication appliance is uh, synced up, we can go and open up site recovery. And remember, you need to have done the previous tasks in site A as well for this to work. We don't, we're going to create a site pair, so we're going to pair um, VCSA01 to um, the VCSA02 vCenter. So this is a site pair, so we're pairing site A with site B, or site 1 with site 2. And this allows the replication to um, to work between the two sites, it's kind of given it the, given it the authority to do so. And there's a second VCSA, so connecting VCSA to VCO2 for the purposes of replication. It's found the service there that we've just installed, that OVA or OVF. And we've seen that it's connected to site B, so again, site A connected to site B. And we click finish here. Okay, and that's the sites connected. Okay, so unfortunately I had some problems with the uh, recording of the configuration of replication jobs. So um, going forward, I'm just going to refer to my blog. I have a few screenshots on here that we can uh, run through to demonstrate how we actually protect virtual machines and also how we, how we restore them as well once they're protected. Um, so if we go to the, the blog article here, which I will uh, link to in the description for the video, and uh, we, we'll notice here, you, we're already up to section six. So we've just paired the sites together. And now we're gonna look at how we actually configure the replication jobs. So what we would do here, it was we would go to our primary site where all of our VMs uh, are located. And we would right click the virtual machine that we're interested in replicating. We go to site recovery and we would uh, click the configure replication option for that virtual machine. Uh, check your pop-up blocker if uh, nothing uh, loads up because it actually launches a separate uh, web page. Um, so now we need to um, select the site that we want to replicate the virtual machine to. So in my instance here, all my VMs are on my VCSA01 and I want to replicate them to VCSA02. But do bear in mind here that you can actually replicate VMs from, v from the same vCenter to the same destination vCenter that they actually are currently located on. So where you might want to do this is where you have one vCenter managing hosts and storage in two different sites. You know, that is, that is technically possible. Um, but uh, obviously it's always advised to have a separate set of infrastructure for your DR site. So in the lab, I've got a separate vCenter server that's called O2 and that it runs in a different location uh, from my primary vCenter. So I've selected VCSC02 as my destination for my replicated VM copies. And then uh, it checks validation. And once we've done that, uh, we select our target, v uh, our target uh, data store where we want to store the replicated copies. And uh, if you are... Um, if you do have copies of the VM available, let's say you've got very uh, low amount of bandwidth between the two sites and large virtual machines, you can take a copy of the virtual machine VMDKs um, onto some kind of uh, storage media and transport that physically to the other vCenter server and upload the files to a, a data store or um, you know or basically yeah, to, a, to a data store on that site. Uh, this will then allow you to click this select seeds button and you can select those VM um, DK files and uh, use them as a source, um, like a seed essentially for replication. Uh, so it doesn't actually need to replicate the whole um, VM, it'll just replicate the changes for you. 
Um, once we've done that, we can then select our RPO. So with uh, Visa Replication on-prem, we can go down to five minutes. So, which basically means your VM will be out of date by no more than five minutes, um, providing that you have the bandwidth and everything to do that. And there's loads of other options here that you'd expect with a typical replication solution. So we can take snapshots um, of the virtual machine and choose those for recovery. Um, let's say you've got like a crypto locker or similar um, issue on the on your network, you can actually go back a few snapshots rather than taking the latest replicated um, uh, copy as a as a um, for, disaster, for disaster recovery. Uh, we've also got guest quiesing and the standard things like encrypting and um, network compression for the data going over the line. Um, once you've uh, replicated the VM, you can have a look at the uh, replications from uh, the site recovery page. Uh, this will basically uh, give you an overview of all the replicated VMs and which direction they're replicating and uh, what your RPO is set, set for them. And you can select each one and it gives you more data like if there's a lag in the replication due to like load bandwidth or too many write changes, etc., happening uh, on the virtual machine for the system to handle. And uh, it'll show you like your RPO and all the settings that you set up when you originally um, created the replication job. Um, you can also like pause resume and do a manual sync as well from the, the same interface. Now onto the interesting stuff. So if you wanted to recover the replicated uh, virtual machine, then you'd need to log in to the secondary vCenter or your DR vCenter if you like. Uh, just open up the menu, go to your site recovery, and then click the incoming uh, VM, like the incoming number. Uh, and what that'll do is it'll ask you to authenticate back to the, the vCenter, and then you'll be able to select the VMs that you want to recover. So you would just literally select one or more VMs that you want to recover. Uh, and then um, it will try and do a sync. Um, if It will try and do like a final sync before the recovery. But if that's not possible, you could just use the latest data that's available at the DR site. And then you would choose your location and everything for where you want the VM to be recovered to. And uh, click go. And once you've done that, you can monitor the, rep the uh, recovery status in the UI and you will see uh, a state of recovered once it's finished. And sure enough, you can see the virtual machine there and power it on and just check everything's uh, good before uh, relying on that virtual machine for production. If you need any assistance um, with any issues or any configuration problems with the revocation uh, installation or with configuring or recovering virtual machines, uh, obviously reach out to your um, support uh, entitlement in your VMware account um, or you can also use the VMTN forums which have a surprising uh, number of useful f uh, topics in there uh, regarding vSphere application. So if you do have any small errors or any strange things that are happening with your environment then definitely take a look at the forums and um, there's a lot of information there that's been built up over the last few years. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for listening and I hope it's useful.